Hey guys, we are back with our new video. So today's our topic is cardio examination. So without any further delay, let's get into it. Hi, I'm your Dr. Bhavani Singh. Can you please tell me your name and age? I'm Pradeep and I'm 19. Okay, so today I'm going to examine your heart. Is that okay for you? Yeah, okay. Okay, so do you had any cardiac surgery before? No, I didn't. Okay, so do you feel sometimes that your heart is coming out from your chest cavity? No. Okay, so we will start with some basics. So can you please show me your hands like this? Yeah, sure. Okay. So now I'm checking for the cyanosis. If the patient is cyan cyanotic, then there is blue bluish discoloration on the finger pads. So this is peripheral cyanosis. Now I will okay relax. Now I will check the central cyanosis. For that I will check lips <coughs> and mucosal membrane. Okay, so with the help of the pen light, okay, open your mouth, tongue move your tongue upward. Okay, so there is no bluish disc discoloration on the mucosal membrane. That means patient doesn't have central cyanosis. Okay, so can you please do your hand? So now you will check the temperature of the patient. Same on the both side. Okay, relax. Can you do like this for me? Okay, so I'm checking for the clubbing. So patient has this window called the Samros window. So patient is normal. Okay, so now I will start with the JVP. So can you please lie down first? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, so starting of the JVP, first you will check the patient capillary refill time. So for that you will squeeze the patient nail pad and then you will just remove and see there uh, the blood supply will be coming on the nail pad. It should be less than 2 to 3 seconds. Okay, if uh, the blood supply is more taking time more than 2 to 3 seconds, that means the person is hypovolemic and then you have rough idea that yeah you will decrease the angle of the bed or increase the angle of the bed so patient is normal then the no normal jvp angle is 30 degree always okay so we will start with the <coughs> jvp so first instruct the patient carefully so sir please look at your left side okay right. so you will identify the scm muscle first so this is scm muscle and you will see the pulsation of the internal jugular vein on the SCM muscle. Just the middle of the SCM muscle or yeah. Okay, I can see. Okay. And then after that, with the help of the ruler, you should have ruler. So, and then you will identify the angle of Louis or external angle, which is in the second rib or you will just place your finger on the external notch and then you come downward and where you see the first depression that would be external angle like you will start from the external notch come down and where you see the first depression where there would be your external angle okay and then you will place your ruler on the external angle And one would be where you see the highest oscillation point. Okay. And then like this. So this patient has JVP of 2.5 centimeter, which is normal. And the if the JVP is more than 3 centimeter, that is abnormal. Okay. And okay, that's all. Okay, now we will check the carotid pulse. So carotid pulse is medial to the SCM muscle. So can you please look away? Look that side, okay. So this is SCM muscle and you will find the carotid pulse medial to the SCM muscle. So you will place your these two fingers medial to the SCM muscle and you can feel the pulse. It should be like not so so high or not so low. So it should be regular in the rhythm that's all now we will auscultate the pulse so you will use your 
diaphragm okay and instruct the patient that when you are checking the pulse at that time take normal breath sir and then hold your breath okay so that you will not hear your patient's breath sound okay relax so you will auscultate for the 10 seconds and uh, you will get to know that if there is any abnormality like bruits or not bruits are abnormal arterial blood flow turbulent blood flow that's all okay so now we will come on the heart so first of all you will instruct the patient to remove the cloth and then you will drape the patient so you will cover the patient abdominal area and just open the chest area so that you can so that you can uh, inspect the precordium okay so now you will after the draping the patient you will start the inspecting the precordium precordium is the area where the heart is located in the chest cavity okay so you will inspect that so there is no scar there is no redness or there is no swelling and then you will come to the parallel to the patient you will come parallel to the patient and see if there is any abnormal impulses coming out from the chest, chest cavity like uh, they are called palpitations so if the patient is abnormal then you can see the palpitations like the chest cavity is out coming out okay so we are done with the inspection now we will <coughs> do the palpation so for the palpation there are two techniques to check the if the heart is abnormal or not so heaves and thrills so for the heaves you will use your finger pads and for the thrills you will use your bony area either this one or this one okay so heaves are abnormal impulses coming out from the chest cavity okay so you will place your fingers on the heart walls you should know the location of the heart walls and try to feel that you can feel the impulses or not if you can feel the impulses that is abnormal that is not normal okay so we are done with the heaves now we will do the thrills thrills are abnormal vibrations coming out from the heart <clears throat> okay so for thrills you will use your bony area you will place your hand on the walls or again all the walls and try to feel if there is abnormal thrills or not okay so i didn't find anything so that means patient is normal now we will check the pmi pmi is point of maximal impulse which is in the normally in the fifth intercostal space or below the nipple so you don't need to count the uh, intercostal spaces like this no so you just place your fingers you just place your fingers underneath uh, below the nipple like first you will place the four fingers underneath the nipple or sorry below the nipple and then you will feel the apical impulse underneath your one finger so where you are feeling the pulse keep that finger on the patient body and other fingers you just remove okay so the normal pmi is pmi diameter in this area is 2.5 cm if the pmi area is in this area is more than 2.5 cm that means there is left ventricular hypertrophy okay okay now we will do the auscultation of the heart so normally we auscultate the walls of the heart to hear any abnormal sound like murmur or not so you should know the location of the heart walls the second intercostal space right to the sternum which is aortic wall and left to the sternum second intercostal space second and third intercostal space you will hear the sound of pulmonic valve 
after the pulmonic valve parallel to the nipple and left to the sternum tricuspid valve and just below the nipple in the fifth intercostal space there is mitral valve okay so we auscultate the heart valves okay now we will check the all the pulses of the patient so we will check the both pulses at the same time it should be simultaneously so you should know the location of the all the pulses now i will start with the just relax your hands yeah i will start with the radial pulse which is on the thumb side of thumb side of the hand so you will try to feel it should be simultaneously not a regular that uh, from the left hand it is coming fast and from right hand it is coming slowly so it should be simultaneous and rhythm should be regular okay after checking the radial pulse we will come on the brachial pulse which is on the medial to the biceps tendon if you don't find the okay relax your hands if you don't find the pulse just first check the biceps tendon find that both both hands of the biceps tendon and place your thumb or these two fingers middle to the biceps tendon press firmly because it is deep to the in the in this fossa so you can't palpate easily so palpate firmly so that you can feel the pulses medial to the biceps tendon okay after checking the brachial artery we come on the popliteal artery which is deep down to the knee joint so we can't palpate it normally so you should know the location where it is popliteal artery now we come on the uh, posterior tibial tibial artery which is which is post posterior and little inferiorly to the medial malleolus these are malleolus so posteriorly and little inferiorly okay now the last pulse is dorsalis pedis which is on the highest bone of the foot so yeah these all the pulses should be simultaneously and we are done with the pulsation okay now we will do the last step of the cardio examination which is pitting edema so for the pitting edema you can use the patient leg or thigh also so what you will have to do is you will press one finger in the patient muscles okay not on the bony area on the muscles and you will see the location where you pressed it will come out slowly if there is pitting edema otherwise not it is normal see okay we are done with the cardio exam okay so we did the cardio examination so first of all you will take the introduction of the patient after that you will ask the patient about history he had any cardiac surgery or not or uh, if he feels any palpitations or abnormal impulses coming out from the chest cavity like that you will ask about history and after that you will start with the basics you will check the peripheral cyanosis so for that you will check the finger pads if the patient is cyanotic that means the oxygen level in the blood is low so the peripheral cyanosis for finger pads and after that you will check the uh, central cyanosis for that you will check the patient's lips and mucosal membrane so if the patient is cyanotic then there is bluish discoloration on the mucosal membrane and the lips and after that you will check the clubbing of the patient if there is clubbing in the nails that that indicates the congenital heart disease or bacterial endocarditis and after that you will take the patient jvp so take note of it that if the patient is healthy first you will check the capillary refill time so for that you will squeeze the patient nails for 2 seconds and then you will remove and see the
the blood supply will flow in the nail pad and if the blood supply is more than 2 to 3 seconds that means patient is hypovolemic and you need to decrease the angle of the bed and if it is in the 2 to 3 seconds that means patient is normal and you can measure the JVP on the 30 degree angle okay so after measuring the JVP JVP should be in the 3 centimeter okay so if the JVP is more than 3 centimeter that is elevated JVP and if the JVP is in the 3 centimeter that is normal okay so J what is JVP JVP is the pressure inside the right atrium okay so why do we do why do we check the JVP on the right internal jugular vein because right internal jugular vein direct drain into right atrium okay that's why we take the JVP always on the right side and the next is we do the pulsation of the carotid artery so the carotid artery is medial to the SCM muscle and don't go higher because there is carotid bodies baroreceptor so they can give the signal to the heart that the blood supply to the brain is not good so please do it fast so patient will be the BP will be increased if you are pressing to the carotid bodies so after that after palpating the carotid artery you will auscultate the carotid artery why do you auscultate the carotid artery to hear any abnormal sounds like bruits bruits are abnormal arterial blood flow so that could be produced by turbulent flow blood flow okay so after that you are done with the neck area now you will come on the heart chest area so you will perform on the heart so first you will inspect the precordium precordium is the area where the heart is located so you will just identify that there is no scars there is no any abnormality like swelling or redness something and then you will put tendence tangential light and then go parallel to the patient and see that uh, if you can see the palpitations like the chest is coming out up and down up and down that is abnormal so you will not see normally if the patient is normal so after the inspection in the inspection you will not touch the patient try to remember okay after that you will come on the palpation in the palpation there are two techniques heaves and thrills heaves are impulses coming out from the chest cavity that can be produced by if the heart is hypertrophic okay and thrills are turbulent blood flow so turbulent blood flow it can be produced by if the walls are not working well okay so thrills are vibrations heaves are impulses and then you check the PMI PMI is below the nipple in the fifth intercostal space and usually the diameter of the PMI is 2.5 centimeter and the characteristics of the PM uh, impulses it would be taping like like it will be tapped underneath your finger so like that. up and down up and down you can feel the PMI if the patient is thin and if the patient is not thin if the patient is obese then how will you check the PMI so there is one medical term called lateral decubitus position so you will tell the patient to tilt to left side and then you will place your fingers below the nipple and then you can find the PMI so next is you will auscultate now in the auscultation you will auscultate the four walls to hear any abnormal sounds like murmurs okay so done with the auscultation you should know the location of the heart walls obviously you know and then uh, the last is you will check the, all the pulses both bilaterally and it should be simultaneously and rhythm should be regular and the last step is pitting edema that's all thank you so much I hope this video is helpful for you guys so please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.